Hello and welcome. In today's exciting episode, well, I was going to finish the half-done things, the several half-done things that I have laying about, but I decided to make some brand new dresses. It's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect jacket. So it's still the end of September when I'm filming this. You'll see it on in um, the start of October. But I was supposed to be putting the linings in those tweed jackets that are almost, almost finished. Here they are. Oh, they're taunting me. But before I was going to get to that, I was going to just, you know, egg myself on by doing a fashion haul, I mean, a fabric haul of, and these are the four cottons. I've got like 12 black and white fabrics, but these are the cottons. And I got them out and I was like, actually, these look really good together. I could make a maxi dress out of these because there's two yards of each. Like I was going to make four different things. Like this one, I was going to make a shirt and it's sort of, um, I think it's like branches of a pine tree. And then the little gold things are supposed to be stylized Christmas lights. And then there's this other fabric. It's the quilting fabric. And then this one is like Rockefeller, um, like the big Rockefeller Christmas tree. And it's got um, different Christmas decorations and, um, you know, ornamental flowers and, and a few of those pine leaf things as well so I thought I'd make the jumper dress out of this one here with flowers on it and make a shirt to go underneath it out of the pine leaves one I thought that would be really cute but um yeah so I just got two yards of each because it's going to be a long sleeve shirt and then this one it's got little tiny trash pandas or raccoons and it's just their mug shots their heads and I thought well that's the cutest thing but it's a cotton vol so it's um quite thin and I was going to make a shirt out of that but because it's black you can't really see right through it so yeah it would be fine to use in a skirt and yeah I'm not sure I want to it's like you'd have to match it up so well across both fronts, the left side and the right side of the front and the sleeves. That's too much of a hassle for me. And then I bought this. I wasn't sure. I bought two yards of this as well. And I wasn't sure whether I was going to make a shirt from it or, um, again, just that um, really nice short dress. From McCall's, I already have a couple of um, dresses in dark colours, like the Liberty print on the left and the plain black one in the middle. But it's a lovely pattern and I think this is different enough that you could, you know, well, clearly I bought the fabric. I thought it would be fine. So this is, I'm just showing you how much light goes through. It's perfectly fine to wear as a dress. So, but yeah, seeing these four fabrics together, I was like, actually, these would look really good. These two look really good together. But all four of them look amazing together. I love them. But then I remembered that back in May, I had a black and white month. And the dress on the right is a girly Darth Vader dress. That's got nine yards in it. And the bodice is Butterick 6677. And the skirt is just strips of fabric pleated down together and then the one on the left is that simplicity empire line dress and I just again did a sort of layer cake for the skirt of all different fabrics so I already have a couple of maxis in black and white so then I thought well I really love vintage dresses at the moment and in September I did do that one with um fat quarters and a bit of fabric but there was only about two and a half yards in that one in the end whereas these would be four yard vintage dresses which is my absolute favorite it's like if you know the red vintage dress that I have red and, and pale pink that looks red and white yeah that was a four yard one so what I was thinking is maybe these two fabrics together in a four yard vintage dress and then the other two fabrics together in a four yard vintage dress I'll need a little bit of the trash panda one in the quilting cotton one because yeah just to even them out a little bit but yeah I'm thinking I would like a I'd much prefer, like I'd wear two vintage dresses much more than I would yet another black and white. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, we'll just, 
I'll just pretend I'll wear the vintage dresses more. I will because they're different. This one's kind of more formal, even though it does have the trash pandas in it. And be, because it's darker, it seems more formal to me. So I'd probably wear it at different occasions, whereas the other one's quilting cottons. And it's kind of Christmassy too. So, yeah, I guess they'd they'd probably be relegated to different types of occasions. So what I'm going to do is this is my usual formula for making a vintage dress. The skirt is two yards, four yards, eight yards. So you double it with each tier of the skirt. And then you also need half a yard full width to cut out the front of the bodice and the back of the bodice. So when you're working with four yards of fabric, you just cut strips that are the entire four yards long. So then your first tier only is half a four yard strip. The second tier is a whole four yard strip and the bottom tier is two whole four yard strips. So you're cutting, you're tearing your fabric along the whole length. But when you've only got two two yard cuts, you sort of have to do double everything. So the bottom one is four bits that you have to sew together to get an eight yard strip if you get what I mean so that is what I'm going to do for this one there's going to be two yards in the top four yards in the middle which is two strips of two yards each and then the bottom will be four strips which is eight yards and then I also have to find something um, like a few little bits to make the bodice out of so before I cut this into four strips I'm just going to cut a little bit off and I'm that's going to be used when I piece the bodice together I'm going to add some of that so this is still basically four yards of fabric this um, Rockefeller Christmas tree one but I've just taken out a little bit and then I um, cut it into four strips uh, along the whole thing so it's when I sew them together it's going to be an eight yard loop of fabric so that's the bottom tier done now I have the first and the second tier to go so the first tier is two yards the second tier is four yards but I also have to remember the bodice so um, that means three bits of fabric the same width and I also need something for the bodice. But also, I can't have tier one and tier two out of this and not have anything in between them. Like, it, the third tier of the skirt will look weird. So I'm going to cut a thin strip of the trash panda and that's going to go between the first tier and the second tier of this fabric. It's going to make sense once you see it. So I cut three even bits even strips um, of this. So one's going to be a two yard loop, one's going to be a four yard loop. Plus I've got some trash panda fabric for the first tier and I let made sure I left enough to have enough to do the bodice. So here we go. I've got all the bits together. So this is them laid out. Tier one is going to have the raccoons at the bottom of it tier two and then tier three and then over here we have the three tiers for that dress so um oh here's the little trash panda he's so cute so that's going to be at the bottom of the first tier just to break it up so it doesn't look like the whole of the dress like two-thirds of the dress were made and then I ran out of fabric and I used the last one for the last tier. When I was cutting out the trash panda and lily dress, the lilies I could do in two meter long, uh, two yard long strips, but the trash panda I had to cut salvage to salvage because um, it was directional, but it worked out to be the same amount. It's just more slightly more complicated math. But I got the pieces that I need. So it's going to be um, trash panned. So that's this one here is all cut and folded and ready to sew into loops of first tier, second tier and third tier. And then with the other one. So I'm going to have lilies on the bottom and lilies on the first tier. So I need one for the first tier and I need four for the bottom tier um because those other ones were quilting and these are fashion width I can actually get five strips of fabric out of a two yard cut and it will still look pretty good so I'm going to cut four strips for the bottom 
tier and one strip for the top tier. Then with the trash panda, as I said, it's directional. So I have to cut salvage to salvage and I'm going to cut enough for the bodice and the second tier. So we'll do this one first. I folded it in so that there's four perfectly even bits and then because the four are going to be used for the bottom and then the fifth one. Oh, the reason this one was in clearance is because there were white blobs on the edges. But I mean, I just had to cut off the tiniest amount on each edge and I've still basically got two full yards of full width. Um, full length fabric. So, I mean, you know, don't throw stuff out just because it's got a few misprints on there. You can cut around the misprints and still have loads of fabric left. Anyway, so um, I cut this into five bits. Four of them have to be exactly the same because they're going to go in a, an eight yard loop. And then one bit is slightly different width. And that is going to be the top tier. So now we need a second tier made out of raccoon mug shots. So here we go. Um, as I said, I have to cut this. So I just counted my raccoons. So it's 24, no, 28 raccoons. And then, so I got cut three at 28 raccoon heads. And then I had 34 raccoon heads left. So the bodice is slightly longer, but yeah, because it's, um, I need four yards of fabric. You, I couldn't do just two widths from salvage to salvage. I needed three. And yeah, so that's going to be the second tier. Sorry if that's confusing, but I had to, because it's directional, I had to cut it out that way. So this is vaguely what it's going to look like. It's going to be raccoon bodice, then Lily's top tier, raccoon second tier, and Lily's third tier. So this is the bodice here the 34 raccoons stacked head to head. So I'm going to set that aside and I'll use that in the, that's all my bodice fabrics up the top. And now it is time to sew these piles into loops of fabric so that I can start finally making the skirt now that we've actually got all the ingredients. So I'm going to go and machine sew these into big loops. And here we are. For our third tiers, we have eight yard loops of fabric, dress one and dress two. And then for second tier, we have a four yard loop. Well, the raccoons is slightly more. Oh, and the quilting dress, that fabric on the bottom tier is inside out, but it's, it's going to be darker. And then we have our first tier for each dress. And the quilting dress, it's got the raccoon band of fabric on the bottom of the first tier. So to differentiate the first and the second tier. And the other one is Lily's. So now I have to pleat all these down and sew them together. Oh, I still have that other dress that I have to finish. Yikes. It's chaos here. Yeah, yeah, everything's half done. Speaking of, I'm a little closer to finishing. So um, I've put a pinned layer one and tier two of this skirt together. And this one I've pinned tier two and tier three together. Tier two and tier three is like the biggest amount of fabric. So it's always the harshest one and I tend to put it off. But I thought since I'm making two dresses, I'll do, yeah, the difficult one on one and the easier one on the other. So this is how you pleat. You um, First you find the four points. So the front center, the back center, the left and the right. And then you pin them like the second tier to the third tier. And of course, the third tier is bigger. So it's got all these gaps around it. And then um, after you pin four points, then you pin eight points. Then you find the halfway between and you pin 16 points, then 32 points. And once you've got it down to the point where there's a gap of like the bit of fabric is just enough to do one pleat, then you push it all to the left um, smooth it flat so that the um, this front fabric here is the larger one, obviously. So, and you smooth all the excess fabric over to the left and then you push it back um, so it's nice and flat or you fold it back and you pin it in place and that is how you do a pleat. It's really simple. So once again, you've got the gap of the fabric you smooth it all to the left or if you're the other 
whichever is easier for you. But for me, it's easiest to smooth it all to the left and then you fold it back on itself and then you pin it in place and you just go around and you do every single one like that. And I'm just putting the pins in sideways here because do it sideways. You can use one pin instead of two. And that way I can do the second and third tier on this one and the first tier on this and I won't run out of pins. So once you've gone around and you've fold down every single pleat around the whole thing then it is time to machine sew it so I machine sew once and then I do it again just to reinforce it so go around the whole thing twice and here we go so they're a little bit longer than I guess they should be but it's going to be more of a normal skirt uh, dress length rather than a vintage one but that's fine by me I just <laughs> I'll wear it. It's fine. It's more like a gunny sack dress. So yeah, but it doesn't have the heaviness of a maxi dress. So it's fine by me. So I did the first and second tier on this one. So the whole skirt is done. And then I went back and did the big, <laughs> added the second, uh, the third tier to the second one on the raccoon dress. So yeah, I'm just looking at how long this is. I really love the thin raccoon layer on the quilting cotton one. I think that looks really good. And here we go. I finally finished the second skirt, the skirt for the second one. It's night now. I have to go have dinner. So here they are the next day in natural sunlight. Everything looks better with the sun shining on there. So they're very cute and they're very long, but I like that. I mean... They're kind of like maxi dresses, but I don't know. In my maxi dresses, I tend to use nine yards of fabric, whereas these dresses are only four yards of fabric. So they just seem like regular dresses to me. Like weight-wise, they don't feel like a maxi dress. Anyway, I will leave these on the mannequins for now and get to the bodices. And now it is time for the fun part. I get to decide what I'm going to do for the bodices. So for the trash panda and lily dress, that's just pretty straightforward. It's just going to be, there's loads, there's like a whole fashion width and um, it's 34 raccoons tall. Um, yeah, they're going to just be the front and the back. It's going to be the raccoon fabric. But the other one, I'm going to have to piece all these bits together. There's enough to do the front and then I think, guess I'll just have the plain black for the back. See, this is why I should have kept that black and white check. Anyway, I think this is the order that I'm going to go in, uh, I think. So I'll just go and machine sew these all together. Here we go. So I've machine sewed them together. And yeah, I really like these together. I think it does need narrow, wide, narrow, wide. And then the, uh, the top bit is just going to be shoulder straps. So there doesn't need to be a narrow bit there. Okay, I'm happy with this. Now it's time to press it. Then I'll cut out the bodice. Yeah, I actually ended up making those last night. So <laughs> they are done. And yeah, they're very cute. The Trash Panda one has puffy sleeves but um, they're not sitting right. I guess I could put a, a thing in there that makes them sit out, but I don't know. I kind of like it the way it is. And um, yeah, so instead of using the uh, raccoon for the front and the back, I ended up using it just for the front and made puffy sleeves out of the rest because otherwise I would have had this thick strip that I as a like spare scrap and I was like or I could make puffy sleeves so I did that instead and the other one turned out really cute I needed to use a little bit of raccoon right at the top and you can't really see it near the neckline just to make it fit so yeah so here we go these are the bodices done and I've put them on the mannequins that had the skirts on them so now all I have to do is pin them all together and sew them I think what I'll do is instead of like with the tiers between T1 and T2 and T2 and T3, I just did pleats like all going the same way, all to the left, all round. But I think with the top, when I pin the like the bodice to the skirt, 
I'll have a centre box pleat and then the ones on the left will be going into the centre and the ones on the right will be going into the centre. So they won't all just be the same direction, like left pleats, uh, left knife pleats the whole way around. There'll be a box pleat in the front, box pleat in the back, in the centre back, and then every other pleat will sort of head in towards the box pleat. So yeah, so here we go. They're done. I didn't film the process either. Um, yeah, so... This is the Raccoon and Lily one and this is the Rockefeller one. It's just the Christmas decorations remind me so much of the Rockefeller Christmas tree. So it's the Rockefeller dress now, even though it does have also have raccoons on there. And this is an actual vintage one. So I bought this rose fabric, gosh, I think the fabric haul of me... Um, showing it was back in June, perhaps. I bought eight yards and it was so hard to photograph, but I finally realized that um, if you put have something else in the frame, the the camera can focus on it. But I just, when I just had, when I was doing the fabric call, obviously I just had one fabric in there and the I don't know what it is about that fabric, but yeah, the camera could, didn't know. it. I guess cameras find it hard to focus on red and they find black hard, difficult sometimes too. Oh, and this is me, like, so I showed you the front, the side and the back and now I'm just putting a um, sash on each of them because uh, quite a few of you had said that you want to see it with sashes and with that. So I was just trying to decide which ones. And of course I had to use a green one. And um, the red, the ladybug sash on the vintage dress with the red roses. Oh my gosh, that looks so cute. They look like presents under a Christmas tree, don't they? Maybe just because I've got the Rockefeller Christmas tree in mind. Oh, I love this. And with the green necklace, this is such a cute outfit. I'm definitely going to wear that dress that way. And then the middle one, um, because it's got sort of those beige gold bits in there, I thought the beige and white um, tie would look good there with the big bow and it does it looks very cute and then with the lily and trash panda one um well i bought the ra raccoon fabric with the mug shots of the raccoon because of in amelie she has these portraits of animals over her bed and she dreams that they talk to her they're like a surrogate parrot sort of thing because her dad's kind of obsessed with his garden. I'm Anywho, so I decided I was going to have a red sash, but it didn't really go very well. So then I just went with green because red and green are her sort of signature colours. And that's one of my favourite ties because I love that Sally Kelly print called um, Paradiso. It's so beautiful. All Sally Kelly prints are absolutely gorgeous. Oh, I love this group shot. These three dresses look so well together. I love them. And I have successfully procrastinated. Oh, no, wait. I decided to change the, I was going to um, change the tie. I definitely will wear that white and green one because it goes with my Valentino handbag. But I also like this Gucci style floral print. It's got bugs on there. But I think I'll leave the beige on for now. I think that, yeah, they go really well together. Anyway, yes, I still haven't finished that gorgeous vintage dress out of the cotton vol with the vintage floral prints on it. So pretty. I have to do that. And yeah, all the tweed jackets that are so close to being done. But I just have to sew the linings in. It's it's very fiddly doing all the neckline and sewing backing fabric, tulle and silk all with the same like sewing needle. And you just, uh, yeah. Anywho, these are the dresses. That's it for this video. I, I'm sort of lingering because <laughs> I know I've got. Oh, and by the way, have you noticed that the tweeds, the massive amount of tweed, folded tweeds, is still in the background. I was so sure that when I finished sewing for the night, I'd come back in the morning and then just be, you know, have fallen down or something. But yeah, I'm very impressed that they stayed. They're sort of, I guess, tweed is so cushy and forgiving. Yeah, I still have to hand finish the cuffs, but I really do like the little ring of black around there. I think it match ties in with the black fabric with the lilies on it. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. Otherwise it would sort of look like only raccoons on the bodice, but having the little rings of black sort of 
I don't know, I feel like it makes it match better with the rest of the dress. Thank you very much for watching. I still haven't quite decided what I'm going to do for my October plans, which is why you're seeing this video instead of October plans, because usually the first episode of each month is me sewing, uh, saying my plans and sort of showing you some of the fabrics and things. And yeah, that's why I did get out these fabrics to sort of do a fabric haul and then do the the plans and yeah. Oh well. Okay, I am off to do those jackets now. Thanks again for watching and happy sewing.